And really, it's that confidence of uh, playing long innings in Test match cricket, which I think has a lot to do with it. Here's broad balls for Shami. Shami has a big, almighty <laughs> swing at it. And he's standing there, legs apart. Almost went up in the air with his uh, stroke as he did, sort of lifted and didn't make any contact and Billings took it. Yeah, both feet off the... That, when Pant was talking to him earlier, I think that's what he was saying. Both feet came off the in the air. He went for the, the kitchen sink. Didn't quite get it. Yeah, the airborne as he tried to play that shot, but uh, Broad's going to certainly try and slip one in under the bat here. One gets the feeling. They haven't bowled that really at, at uh, Shami at all. Broad comes in this time, short again and pulled nicely, but straight to square leg. And that just shows you, isn't it, Ebony, the, the, the lack of pace in the mm. pitch. I mean, you can see that Broad really bent his back there, came off uh, comfortably for uh, Shami to hit it down. Yeah, just it's just the pace off the pitch. It's the, the older ball as well. It's just felt a little bit lacklustre off the surface. There's a, there's a little bit in there, but in terms of pace and carry, we haven't really seen that, that fire in the wicket. Broad goes away from us from the pavilion and into bowl to Shami and Shami this time is upper character the fielder is interested he's gonna catch it yes he is and Broad's got the breakthrough Shami just helping it it's on it on its way to, to looking to clear third man didn't get enough on it and a fairly straightforward catch then in the end for Jack Leach and England have their first wicket 371 for eight it's a really good line there from Stuart Broad actually because what it did is it caught Shami and what should I pull it or should I try and cut it and then he ended up sort of in two minds and trying to ramp it last minute. I think that line was the, the threat, really, that made him have to think a few times. They are just waiting for something to confirm. Maybe just confirming the front foot. Shami and uh, uh, the Empire, Alimdar, were just waiting there. That's been confirmed, so no damage done. And India have lost their eighth wicket. Shami is gone, just as the new ball is going to be due in a couple of uh, deliveries in this over. And Shami has gone for... Uh, a well-made 16, probably didn't score about 20-odd runs here and there, but uh, Andy's poised and ready. That's uh, Stuart Broad's 550th test ah. wicket. He had a 40-over weight between his uh, 549th uh, in the uh, the first innings uh, at Headingley against New Zealand, his 550th. He's the sixth bowler to reach 550 uh, wickets uh, after, uh, well, Murray Lytheran, he's the way, 800, Shane Warne, 708, Jimmy Anderson, 654, Anil Kumble, 611, Glenn McGrath, 563, and now Broad, 550, in 156 test average, currently fractionally over 28. Fantastic career, as uh, Ebony's been replaced by Mark Ramprakash, and Mark, what a fantastic achievement for Stuart Broad, isn't it? Mm, absolutely, a very good morning, everyone. Yes, it's a real testament. I mean, when people ask me about Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad, I, I just wax lyrical about their professionalism, their dedication to, over their long careers, stay in tip-top physical shape because fast bowling hurts. It's a tough yes. old thing to do. And you, you have to bowl long spells, um, slamming that front foot down on hard wickets, and it really takes its toll on the body. So they, they have been incredibly dedicated. Um, of course, they got better at their craft and they're wonderful role models for, for young England bowlers. The Indian captain is on strike. Boomer faces the first ball and is looking to leave it. In the process, manages to sort of guide it down to third man. Didn't intend to, but uh, he will be safe for the moment. 371 for eight. India starting at 338 this morning and losing the wicket of Shami, but not before uh, Jadeja picked up his third hundred and he's really got a standing ovation from the crowd as he should because it was a fantastic innings in the context of the game interesting field from england again almost as if it's precise every fielder has been placed in a specific position three men in wide cordon outside the off stump behind the wickets as broad bowls and boomers pull this away is this in the air it could be out is it or is it going over oh great effort down there the fielder got his hands to it tossed the ball back in so there'll be no run, but a lot of drama and a fantastic effort. I'm not sure who the fielder down on the boundary is, but uh, it was going over his head. Crawley there did very, very well. The umpire will have a look, but it looks like, Mark, that it was a six-run save there without any question. Well, it will go round as a, it will go down as a dot ball in the scorebook. Uh, just having a look at a replay, Zach Super. Crawley is a tall man, and he's managed to catch the ball. And as, as he's falling... 
uh, throw the ball back inside the rope. Uh, we often see this type of catch in, in the IPL or the short format fielders on the boundary. Very athletic, very quick thinking. Um, has saved, certainly saved six runs there for England. Um, uh, the batsman actually didn't cross, so no. it, it will go down as a dot ball. ball. <laughs> and, and that's why sometimes the pure stats never tell the full story. Round of applause, rightfully deserved for uh, Stuart Broad. He acknowledges the crowd here with a wave of his hand and Jimmy Anderson will have the new ball. But just the alertness, the mindfulness of it all, running around to his right and then getting underneath it, knew he had it, and if he'd probably been a yard maybe in deeper, he could have probably held on to it as well. Off balance as he, as he caught it and then realizing that it would have gone over, he just tossed the ball back in. Absolutely brilliant. The difficult thing for those catches is the awareness of where the rope is because when the ball goes up in the air, obviously the, the fielder's looking at the ball. So they run round the boundary, but they're not quite sure where the rope is. It's in their peripheral vision. Jimmy Anderson with the new ball. And it's left outside the off stump. Has the new ball actually been taken or is, is Jimmy just going to bowl a couple of looseners? With the oh, it has been taken. Just confirmation. And Jadeja lets the first one go outside the off stump. Are you are you surprised that there's just two slips and not more of an attacking field in the conventional cordon for Jimmy Anderson with the new ball? Conditions still overcast. Well, I, I guess yes and no is is, is the answer. Um, Anderson is up balls and Jadeja flicks it away in the air on the onside square of the wicket. They look for two. Will they go for it? They're going for it. The returns coming in at the bowler's end. And Bumrah makes his ground. So let me you know, try and elaborate on that. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, no, I'm not surprised because I'd say that this is a conventional way of trying to keep the man who's in, JJ, who's on strike and who's got 100, they're trying to keep him quiet and stop boundaries. Um, so, in a way, no. But in a way, yes, because of the way Ben Stokes has spoken in the media about always being on the front foot, always trying to attack. Chadeja waits for Anderson. He's in from the far end bowls, and Anderson watches as Chadeja plays it out towards mid wicket. And coming in, Potts, I think, does the fielding. No run. And we were discussing and reflecting yesterday uh, off air uh, and how that Ben Stokes may reflect on yesterday's uh, afternoon session and how that partnership got away from England. Uh, and whether there would be a more pragmatic approach. Mm. And perhaps this morning we're seeing that. Uh, in the way that England are trying to dispose of this lower order. Anderson into Jadeja, both down the leg side. Doesn't make any contact, looking to flick it away. Stays 373 for eight. Stokes probably wants to bring the field in a little bit now. And he is. Trying to ensure that uh, Jadeja doesn't get an easy single and then they can have a crack at Bumrah. Because unlike Shami, uh, Bumra went for a shot of the second ball he faced. Shami faced 17 or 18 balls where he was just intent on defence. Yeah, and, and that's how, where Jajaja will want to know what's he going to get from his partner at the other end. How Are they, they going to stick with him, in which case he can play conventionally, or he may play a few shots? Anderson to Jadeja who flicks it away on the onside. He will get runs. Uh, a single is all that he will take. Could have pushed for a second if he wanted, but chose not to. And uh, that will give Bumra one ball to face from Jimmy Anderson. 374 for eight now. There's a little bit of rain in the morning, but uh, play starting more or less on time, just a couple of minutes of delay. There is some weather about, but uh, one hopes that uh, we will get a full day's play in. There will be some overs that will be attempted to be made up. We'll find out how the day progresses. Now, three slips for uh, Bumra. There's a sort of a fly gully. Cover. Shortish, uh, straightish extra cover man at mid on. In fact, the fly gully field is being dispatched to the deeper into the field as uh, Anderson is up to Bumra, comes in and bowls, and Bumra defends very competently on that occasion. Gets a cheer from the crowd. 374 for eight. That's the end of the 81st over. Andy. Uh, Jasper Bumra had a significant breakthrough as a test batsman in last, uh, last summer's series. Started the series with a, a fine, rapid 28 at Nottingham. 34 not out at, uh, in that partnership with Shami at Lords and 24 at the Oval. To put that in context, before the series began last summer, uh, Jasper Brumrah had averaged 2.2 .2 <laughs> with 
with the bat in 20 tests and 30 innings and never scored more than 10. More than 10. So it was an extraordinary turnaround in his oh, batting well, fortunes. <laughs> Well, what's that due to? Is it is it the new batting coach, perhaps, who spent a bit of time with him? Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stuart Broad now round the wicket, two slips in place, and the rest of the field well spread. And he goes away from us, round the wicket to Jadeja, goes in balls, and Jadeja's defending on the onside. Refuses the single that's on offer. Well, he's got his captain at the other end now, so I'm sure they will agree on what will be their strategy. Yeah, they're having a discussion now, actually, about what the strategy is. I mean, obviously, to JJ, he's flicked that into mid-wicket. Could have been an easy single. Do they take all the runs that they can, or do they wait, perhaps, when the field comes up for the fifth and sixth delivery and try and attack that? Leaving runs on the table, I guess, is the only counter-argument as uh, Broad Bowl's full, and uh, Chareja flicks it over the non-striker's head. He's only going to have possibly taken one because the man moved quickly to his right from a straightish long gone and uh, they refuse the run i wonder if, if that really makes a lot of sense i mean it's going to take one ball isn't it for either batsman to get out and then you're leaving runs uh, which are easily available mm. i guess there is a, a plan and a method to what the two indian batsmen have talked about here's uh, broad to jareja comes down the wicket this time and has a bit of a swish doesn't make any contact yeah, that, that surprises me there. Sajaja advances.